Hello, everyone. Before I begin my speech, allow me to take this time to congratulate the graduating class of 2020. A toast to all of us. We have done it. And to thank my family for being my rock and support. This milestone is as much as yours as it is mine. To my grandfather, wherever he is. Hello, graduate mo nga po. And to SMCC for the 15 years of being a Michaelinian and for the opportunities I've had. And to the certain people who have been with me through highs and lows of high school. As we traverse through another set of obstacles, may our bonds strengthen, bend, but not break. It is the end of an era, but the beginning of another more vigorous path. It is the end of people clamoring on to the next gossip of who broke up with who and who's dating who, but the beginning of people anxiously waiting for who passed the exams and who didn't. When we think about college, we think about being an adult and alone in uncharted territories. It's unnerving and terrifying. To top that, a global pandemic that has greatly affected millions and millions of people, especially those who live whose lives are on the line, and those who are barely hanging on by a thread. Months or even years ago, when we think about the future, we envision ourselves being in college, graduating, and or having a job. However, this vision still stands true. We are fully aware, in the back of our minds, that the future is uncertain. When I was told that I was to deliver a valedictory speech through the online graduation ceremonies, I was honestly taken aback. Not because of the oddity of it all, but because I did not know what to say, especially with everything that has been happening in the world. I'm sure a lot of us have been consumed by the media about the current situation, the horrors and the harsh reality, and that it has induced fear among us, the fear of uncertainty. While I was racking my brain for the many directions that my speech could venture off to, it dawned upon me that the very thing that we all need right now is hope. So I decided to use this platform to instill hope without disregarding reality, to inspire instead of to evoke fear, which the media has successfully accomplished. I'm not saying that I know everything will be okay in the next few months or even in the next few years, but what I am trying to say is that we will get through it. However difficult life has become, however uncertain our future has become, we will get through it. But we couldn't do that if we do not unite, if we do not work together, if we do not show humanity, if we do not become the stewards that God has molded us to be. Everywhere around us, there's conflict and there's war. And we do not only witness those on the news or even in the media, but those are also happening within us and with other people. Not everyone feels safe in the confines of their own homes, which is why most people tend to try and escape reality and venture into social media to allow themselves to breathe. Maybe through watching ridiculous videos or knee slapper memes or even just through talking with someone they trust and love. But why do other people keep making media more unsafe and uncomfortable than it already is? Why do other people make why do people keep brushing it off even when it seems like someone needs help? So if you know someone who is struggling with life at home, try and reach out. Try to be there for them. A simple, hi, I'm here for you, will more than suffice. Because the last thing that they need right now is sheer isolation from everyone, including themselves. The quarantine has given us more than enough time and space to devote our energy into things that we have long neglected. I personally decided to minimize even almost completely stop altogether my usage of Facebook and Instagram and the like, so as to dedicate my time to other things that really matter. And I have realized a multitude of things, of which I will share with you. One, a cacophony of sounds and music playing from the many vehicles that pass by our house has become my new radio. 
You see, I've developed a last song syndrome for ridiculous TikTok songs just from the music blasting from motorcycles as I am not a TikToker myself. I have concluded, and I will speak this in my native tongue, na guapa jud kayo ang tamban, bisag tagpila pa siya. Two, and I cannot stress this enough, healthcare workers, janitors, grocery shop clerks, delivery guys, farmers, construction and industrial workers, PUV drivers, and food vendors are among those who belong in the working class that are, more often than not, overlooked, taken for granted, and underpaid. Yet these people are the ones we need most right now. Don't you think it's quite unfortunate that the only time that people ever genuinely appreciate and recognize their importance and hard work is also that time that humanity is on the brink of a great loss due to the global pandemic? Think about it. Think about the class antagonism that has been circulating in society, the prejudice and the disdain that these people receive from those who think they're better. And yet, here we all are, challenged by nature and circumstances. All of our lives are at risk, but these people and all the other frontliners are helping us survive. In behalf of everyone, I thank you. And three, it is perfectly okay if what you did today was just survive. It's okay not to know what to do or how to do it or what college to go to or even what job to have. The important thing is that you don't give up because with faith and hope, everything will work out in the end. Now, we are faced with the decisions and challenges. I implore you, my fellow schoolmates, and to anyone who is listening to this right now, live profoundly and fully. Do not choose the easy way. Rather, venture off into the well-worn path. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. Make a multitude of mistakes, however ugly and embarrassing, as these serve as building blocks to wisdom. After all, a man who has wisdom is a man who knows how to live. I hope that when this is all over, we will then have learned our lessons. I hope that we will then have understood the essence of humanity, unity, and forgiveness. I hope that we will then have appreciated the value of the lives of other creatures, humans and animals alike. I hope that we will then have learned our mistakes. In movies, people have time machines or reset buttons to correct those mistakes. But in reality, we don't have those. Instead, we only have limited chances. What would you do? Thank you.